What's going on everybody? Gunner here and this is episode 6, sorry, I know you can't see me. <laughs> this is episode 6 of Tie Like a Pro and today's all about dubbing brushes. I want to do uh, two videos, one's going to be uh, kind of pike and musky focused, one's going to be trout focused. Uh, and first off is going to be pike and musky because I want to do two brushes. I want to do a 7 inch synthetic brush and I want to do a mega jerk brush. And the first one's going to be plain and simple. The, the primary things I want to go over is basically how to make dubbing brushes consistent. So I'll go over a few just kind of techniques and things that I figured out. And then we'll play and I'll go over some material substitutions and selection and why they are the way they are. And we'll talk about mega jerk brushes, pre-tapering brushes, and the teardrop silhouette and all that good stuff. So, because uh, I'll get questions on this, this is a Stonfo dubbing brush device. Uh, this is the physical device. You basically get, you know, the, the shaft connection, this stand, the table, the spring, the, the table, you get basically everything but the vise, and it comes with a little pin, uh, so that if your vise can rotate, you can use your vise, right? But, uh, like if you have a fixed vise, and, and obviously your vise probably isn't on ball bearings that can do that, uh, Stonfo also has a turbo spinner, um, and that's just that, it clamps in your vise and it has a ball bearing system for spinning this up. And I actually like that it's manual instead of a drill, and we'll go over that. Uh, later, but I have these on my website, and this is about the only shameless promotion I'm going to do during this is that I have this, and I have uh, some material kits up on the website that are going to have the materials that we're going to go over today for the pike and musky brushes. So feel free to check that out. The two primary materials that we're going to be using is Steve Farrar Blend, which is going to create our dense core, and then we're going to use Big Fly Fiber uh, as our wing material. Uh, I have a few different core substitutions that I'll go over. I haven't really found a substitution for big fly fiber. It's kind of my favorite and perfect wing material, perfect length, and, and it just sheds water and it's lively and it does everything I want. So this is kind of my staple in a lot of my brushes. This, however, you can basically use any of the just add H2O products, uh, like the Slinky Fiber is probably the best bang for your buck. The Steve Ferrar blends nice because it has splash in it. and it's, a, it's basically, if you look for any medium, this is an S crinkle fiber, right? So you take a fiber and you crimp it and it creates an S, and the S creates bulk, and so it's a medium S crinkle fiber, uh, you know, density-wise or um, um, diameter. I, I wouldn't really call it a coarse fiber, but it's, it's medium diameter, so you find something else that meets that criteria, feel free to use it. So, the wire that we're going to use is Uni Dubbing Brush Wire. I use size large for all of my brushes. Um, it's I just can put the most pressure on it, it's the most consistent, it typically spins up the best. And I use a lot of big bulky materials and usually pretty high density, uh, and so the large is kind of a must. I also have that on the website, so check that out. When you get it, I'd highly recommend you go buy a really cheap bobbin and put it in there because it'll unravel on you and if you just like kind of peel it off it'll get line twist in it and then you'll put a kink in it and it's a mess and this is really easy to handle. So I like to go around my my little uh, hook here twice and then I'll spin this which is basically going to lock that in place right. So that's locked in place. I'll run over here and run that twice. We're going to come and cut off our tag. So that's good to go. Something that's going to be extremely useful to you is using uh, wax. Wax is really going to help everything stay in place. It's going to stop everything from twisting when you go to spin this up. Really helps with the consistency. Put a dab all the way down and across. And then this is something I've learned. You got a little hex wrench that comes with this. You can lock this spring into place. Super helpful because it's going to put a lot of lateral pressure on this when we start spinning and it's going to keep everything locked in place early on so that we can brush it out um, kind of like at the 10% mark and keep everything from twisting into a mess. So I'm going to push this spring tight and lock that into place. Make sure that's good and coarse. Oh, my foot here is sliding around. Sorry about that. Good and coarse and then I'm just going to raise up my table until my wire's tight and it's seated inside the middle, my middle groove. I'm going to come in with Steve Farrar, uh, Steve Farrar blend, right? And you're going to have to play with the density, but I'll try to uh, kind of get it so that you can see what's going on here. But my favorite uh, kind of proportions for this is about a three inch core 
maybe maybe two and a half inch. You can see I have a marker right here at two and a half, three inches, five, seven. That's just for reference. But about a two and a half inch core is my favorite. And if you take this, I like it so that I get three sections out of this. It's about perfect. And those three sections at this density should fill up my table. Now because some of these fibers are going to be interlocked together, it's kind of a pain in the butt if you just go to spread it out, but if you do it in your hand, you can make it quite a bit more consistent and then lay it down. So I'll, like, I'll pick this up. Instead of just spreading this out, because if your fibers are crisscrossed, you'll just make the crisscross worse. Um, and it's really frustrating and then you have the core will be trapped at the same spot and you'll have a really dense part even though your your wings might be separated it'll it'll crisscross and create weird density zones but if you take this and you separate it and say it's like kind of screwed up and interlocked you can kind of pinch and pull it out and create a nice consistent core where all your fibers are straight vertical and then you come in and move this out and I don't mind if this edge is uneven right I don't mind that at all you know if it's uneven by a quarter of an inch it doesn't matter at all this is a seven inch wide brush you know a quarter of an inch doesn't make the biggest deal so this has been extremely helpful just in, in consistency for my brushes so that all my flies come out the same sorry about my head being in the frame I gotta make sure this is all consistent here cool so that's I mean that's as consistent as I'm probably ever going to get it. Uh, nice density. You can see it's still transparent. You know, this isn't like crazy dense. I would rather, personally, build bulk in how many times I wrap a brush uh, versus putting bulk into the brush. If you, because you, you can, it's just easier to control your density that way. The more material you put in, the more material you trap, right? Because you're going to take a material and you're going to wrap it in a wire. The more materials you get in a single crisscross, the more likely they're going to be to pull out. So the sparser you do it, kind of the more durable your brush is going to be, right? So there's a fine line there. Now I already have some big fly fiber cut from earlier. I just saved my scraps. And the best thing to do here um, is you really want to uneven your tips. You, you don't want to just like grab and put a pile in, right? Because you'll get like five pieces on top of each other and it'll create a really stiff joint that won't uh, blend well into the fly. And so you want to grab a lot of uneven tips, you want it to be nice and spread out, and then you just lay it over top, and this is 50-50. Um, a lot of times, your, your big fly fiber out of the package, this distance will be really long. Sometimes the curl comes down about an inch and a half or so, and it will compromise a little bit of this. And in that case, I'll lay these fibers more 60-40, 70-30, because I'm trying to get a certain length. But when the fibers are really long, I'll just lay them 50-50. Um, and it's just the easiest way to spin it up and lay it out and it's nice and consistent. I'm going to have to get a, another little bunch here and regroup. So that's all I'm looking for. This is the density that I would use to build imposters, all sparks, critter bitters. Uh, this is kind of my go-to density. Now you can inlay flash boot in this uh, and create just a nice sparse flash wing that works excellent. Um, my favorite thing to do, and I didn't prepare this, my apologies, is to come in and create a flash core. And what's cool about the flash core is your wing will overlay the core. So you can kind of make it super intense um, because it's hidden, right? And so it's, it's, it's almost transparent and translucent and it's inside the core of the fly. And my favorite material for this is Ripple Ice Fiber. Um, and this spins up really well and it's kind of the perfect length, but you can just inlay this right on your core. And this is one of those things uh, that I'll often fade and transition, so I'm using Smolt Blue right now. Uh, if I was going to intend this for be the tail of the brush and this the head of the brush, uh, so you get like two tails and two heads, you could transition from Smolt Blue to Gold or, you know, uh, whatever, fluorescent yellow copper, you can accent colors, like if you're doing an all black brush you can hit copper in there which would be an awesome dirty water bug. So this is my standard go-to brush. Uh, another reason why this is so nice to have it on a bobbin, you can just draw this out while you wax it. That way you don't have to guess your distance there. Stop that just short, hook that around twice, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to wrap it 
on top of the wire just to lock it in place. Wrap that five times or so, cut that out, and then I'll drop my table down. So right now if you have a dense spot you can go in and you can kind of touch this up and move it and the wax will hold it in place. Um, what I like to do, right, because I lock this in place, I'm just going to come and I'm going to slip my fingers over this wire so this can't fall forward. And then after I'm, I'm going to spin this pretty aggressively and I'm going to stroke this back because I want this front edge to kind of knot on itself instead of getting trapped around my wire and trapped around my hook and, and kinking sideways. I'm going to trap it on top of itself. Then I'm going to come over here and trap this on top of itself once that's secure. Clean this up real quick. Good to go. Trap that. So you can see I just I had I just pushed it on top of itself, so it's kind of knotted. Run your fingers through here until this foot's completely off the ground, and I have all of this is under a lot of tension because this is locked in place, which allows me to come in and lightly brush this out, right? And this is a way early stage of the brush, right? Instead of trapping all this stuff down permanently, I can come and brush this out because this laterally is under a ton of tension because this is locked in place. Now I like to use a really big kind of rough comb. Uh, it, it basically only gets the outer knots and then I'll come in with a, a dog brush and clean this up real quick. I don't want to go too intense. You can see I'm not getting anything. There's nothing in my brush. I'm not ripping anything out. And it's primarily because that's locked into place. Then you're going to open this up. I like to spin it up. We'll probably get about halfway, a little over halfway on our spring. Clean that up real quick. And then I'm going to go to about almost full compression. You can see my spring here, and this won't help you if you don't end up with this device, but my spring is not fully compressed, right? I find that to be about the perfect amount of tension. And what I've noticed is that if you over compress your spring, if you do this all the way, you can spin the large diameter wire so tight that you'll break your fibers. So what I'm doing is, is I like to hold my wheel in place, I'll pull this so that I'm in the bottom of my loop, and then I'll do my finish brushing in hand. And, and the reason why is if, if you brush this all out on the table and then you cut it, it'll backspin like 10 spins and then you got to brush it out anyway. So I just do the whole last section all right here after I've pulled it out and I'll try to keep this in frame for you. And this is where this brush comes in handy. Uh, and I'll run it just kind of up and down the brush, uh, but the, the best pulls are you kind of want to dig it in and then pull it straight out away from itself. And that is your brush. And if you rough it up everywhere, uh, 360 degrees, just kind of rough that up. Pull this off. I'll cut this end clean real quick. Cut this end clean real quick. What I like to do, if you, uh, you just grab and pinch and pull on either side of your brush. And I'm trying to align this so it's flat, right? If that makes sense. That way when I go and I tie this in, I have a flat brush that I can draw all the materials back and control while I walk this forward in palm root. And it'll help you understand and kind of see how dense it is and how consistent you are between brushes. So that is my 7 inch synthetic dubbing brush. This is what all of my imposters and all sparks and critter getters and if I ever mention like a big fly fiber brush on Instagram, this is what I'm using. Uh, and that's how I build it. That's the flash core with ripple ice, big fly fiber wing, and then a dense uh, Steve Farrar flash blend core. And all that flash is kind of hidden in the core. Um, 
And so, real quick before we jump into the Mega Jerk brush, I'm going to draw a picture describing why I like to do the two different materials. Why I like uh, having a dense core and a long wing fiber. So let's, let's jump into that real quick. So this is uh, my, my 7 inch synthetic brush is modeled after Enrico Puglesi's Craft Fur brush, his EP Craft Fur brush. And what he has is an EP core and a Craft Fur wing. And I saw a Larry Dahlberg video where he's making a musky fly and he builds a big fly fiber and supreme hair brush. And so I kind of took Larry Dahlberg's material and I took Enrico's uh, thought process between a dense core long wing fiber and I just extrapolated it to make a seven inch version basically. And when you have a dense core, you consolidate all of your water push uh, basically to your hook shank um, and your long wing material gets to basically accentuate the water push from your core. So your core density is basically everything and then your wing material all accentuates it. Um, so this is kind of the thought process behind it and what it builds is a perfect teardrop. And the, a teardrop, the reason why I like a teardrop is a teardrop is a fusiform shape where the bulk and you'll have to forgive me, the bulk is at the 35% mark. This would be, you know, 35% of your fly from here to here, and then this is the remainder 65% of your fly. This is 65% lake, 35% bulk. This is a fusiform shape. Now, a fusiform shape is extremely ideal because it's the most hydrodynamic shape. A fusiform shape is the same shape that salmonids take, that tuna take, that sharks take. It's for fish that swim continuously because it's the most hydrodynamic. Um, and so you get basically uh, your push, your shoulders, um, that's everything to the fly and then everything, your, all of your wing material, your big fly fiber, all accentuates from your core. And then obviously you can put a nice bulky head on this and you got a fly. You know, if you just took this brush, stuck some flash boo, wrapped the brush in a Buford head, you're good to go. You're golden, right? So it's a really simple system uh, that works for you. And this is one of the ways, um, you know, if you did this with bucktail, and you, you laid your fibers out so that your fibers uh, overlap so you'd have like bucktail butts and bucktail wing your bucktail butts then build your core and you get the same dense core with a bucktail wing that's kind of uh, Brad Bowen's new bionic brushes that he's building that's how those work right he's incorporating his wing into his core simultaneously and for him the the bucktails tapered so he he kind of has the best of both worlds and I wish I would have thought of that <laughs> but that's what's going on there so um, let's uh, before we jump into the mega jerk brush I want to do a quick drawing over the teardrops and why the mega jerk brush is p uh, proportioned the way it is so don't don't mind the head but uh, for the Mega Jerk brush, the whole point of the Mega Jerk brush is that I want, uh, I don't want to create two identical teardrops because the first teardrop um, will basically, you know, you'll get like a water push that'll then hit your second teardrop. I wanted to create an entire, I wanted the entirety of the fly to be a single teardrop from start to finish. So what had to happen is I had to increase my core length. Uh, so that imagine this is building up building up building up right and then as soon as you jump forward if you start over again You lose all of the the kind of bulk that you built up so I increase the core length so that my core is uh, My core has its own teardrop My core has its own teardrop and then my wing has its own teardrop So I'm trying to create uh, one single massive teardrop that envelops itself that's why the brush is pre-tapered, um, and that's why I have this kind of, uh, the tail is the identical as my 7-inch synthetic brush, and then I basically scale it up, uh, scale up the core, shorten my wing length so that my wing length is half my, my tail length, right, so I get the correct proportions, and then it's, the whole thing is based around one teardrop instead of two mini teardrops, one solid teardrop. So that's the whole point of the major brush. Um, and I want to go over a really cool way to build bulk. And now there's two ways to build bulk. And one, as I mentioned, is density, right? Um, and I said that I typically like to do my brushes sparse and I'll control density by how tight and how uh, many times I palmer them. So one way to increase your, your bulk, incre increase your size, your shoulders, your water push, is by how much of a single material you put in here because the materials will support each other. 
The other way is simply by selecting stiffer materials. So that's what the Mega Jerk brush does. Um, I used to build it with Big Fly Fiber, the curly section, but I'm going to show you an alternative, uh, which is going to use Supreme here. Um, I find it quite a bit superior, uh, traps a little bit less water, gives you a lot bulkier shoulders, a lot more push. So we're going to do the Mega Jerk brush real quick. I'm going to clean this up and we'll, we'll dive into that. Um, and now that you understand uh, how I'm going to spin it up, how I'm going to stop my fibers from getting caught on that, how I'm going to lock this in place, and how I'm going to comb it out and, and where I'm going to stop my spring, uh, we should be able to just run through this and show you guys the pre-tapered uh, Mega Jerk brush that creates a solid teardrop over a single fly and this is this is the example of that right you have a single solid teardrop silhouette uh, and all the bulk is built from a brush um, so yeah this is this is a mega jerk by the way this is the mega jerk <laughs> so that's what we're going to build the brush to build this fly um, and this brush you might want to save this uh, for reference because this brush is used in oh man uh, the Mega Jerk, the Portion Control, the Chunky Dunker, uh, the Dragon Spell. So this this double teardrop system, I'm kind of uh, beginning to apply to a really wide range of musky flies. Basically, any articulated fly over eight inches that you see me post will use this brush. So this is this is the brush that you're going to want to um, kind of bookmark if you follow along with me for the next uh, kind of winter tying season. So I have my dubbing brush wire wrapped around, locked in place, strung across. Uh, this hex knit wrench is locked and wax put on the thread. I am purposefully going to make this as complex as possible to show you just how much fun and how much creative control you have over something like this. Um, so hang on a sec. Yep, I'm going to make it as complex as possible. Because um, I want you to see how much freedom you have with a dubbing brush. And the coolest thing to me about a dubbing brush is all you have to be able to do is this. And you build the complexity here. And then when you go to tie it, all you have to do is tie it on and wrap it. Right? So it basically takes no skill. I shouldn't say no skill. It takes a little bit of skill, a little bit of practice. But you can make something extremely intricate, complex, realistic, with fades and tones and a flash core and a wing and the teardrop movement. Um, and basically all you have to do is secure it to your hook and wrap it on, right? So it's an extremely fun way for me to build flies. Um, so I'm going to make this really complex, but I want you to understand the principles behind it. And I want you to get the basics. So I'll show you basically the bottom line, right? So again, I'm going to come in with Steve Farrar Blend. You could come in with Slinky Fiber and a bunch of other... Uh, kind of core synthetics. You come in with strong fuzzy fiber, um, and 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 this is, I don't know, this is just what I have a whole bunch of because I stocked up. Um, and the proportions that I like for the back of this fly, and I'll show you this real quick. Just pull that out of the pack, clean up my edges, right? I'm going to come in. I'm going to cut that at the same length as our seven-inch brush. So we're at two and a half inches. Right, you can see how this is like crisscross and it's really, it's kind of fighting itself. You just kind of pinch and pull, you use friction to align those fibers. Now when I put this on here, I'll make the tail sparser and then I'll make the, the head region coarser. And I'm going to separate this a little bit. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more at the same length. So this is going to be my tail. This is going to be my back hook. This is about all you need. This might even be a little bit much. But what I want you to see, and I'll grab my notebook again, is for density. This right here, what I just did, this is already tapered in density, right? I talked about two ways to build bulk. One is through material, uh, basically diameter material stiffness, and the other one's density. So this back hook, this back brush, basically what I have is one, two, Forward. So this is what you're looking at in terms of density. Like if you look at the back of my brush, it's relatively uh, basically 50%. The middle of my brush is about 100%, which would be my normal 7-inch uh, synthetic brush density would be the middle. And then this collar is about 200%. I have uh, four stacks, two stacks, one stack, right? And that's my relative density. So I build this 
pre-tapered as it is. So when I walk this forward, I'm gonna have a nice stiff collar. And what I like to do, if you saw my Mega Jerk, this is really, really, really net laterally compressed. Uh, if you do put shoulders, I only like them on the front hook. And what you can do is you can wrap this really tight on the back hook, cut your sides flat, um, not extremely flat, but just flat, and then you stack your, your top wing and you, and you can basically build height into a brush and then cut the sides flatter to build an, a, laterally, a laterally compressed tail, if that makes sense. So that's how I like to do that. So this is one, two, four, relative density. Hopefully that is a, a good visual picture for you. You obviously have to get used to it. But then we're gonna come forward here. And I like to cut this at about four inches. So you can see I have this marked uh, basically one, two, three, this would be four. And four inch is my front core. And that's the length that I kind of just predetermined it. It, it. And what it does is it's long enough to cover my connection uh, so that the, the push of water is consistent over the fly. And then I don't worry so much about density. I'll do uh, the front usually about the same. And I'll tell you why. And if you cut Steve Farrar blend in half, it's almost perfectly four inches. Might be a little long, but it's, it's just about perfectly four inches. You can see that just filled right in. And this is about um, somewhere in between the four and the two in terms of density. It's pretty similar, but I'm gonna build bulk through a different material up front. So I'm gonna inlay my big fly fiber um, the same way I did on the tail. You can see I skipped this region. If you watch my old Mega Jerk video, I fill this in. Um, it kind of goes to waste. I find myself not using it, so I just leave it out to save material. And then I can cut my wire in half, and I have a lot of workable wire that allows me to grab my wire and allows me to wrap it around the hook. So this is kind of your, your user-friendly zone to make the brush easier to work with. Um, and so that's just something to be aware of. But I'm going to come in with my big fly fiber, lay it over 50-50, and I'll do both 50-50, and I'll do both at full length, and then I'll actually trim the butt brush once I've already finished it and spun it up to get my taper. So I'm going to come in now with the ripple ice. I'm going to do pearl in the back. And then I'm going to do fluorescent yellow. I want a little pinch right there at the front of that. Then we'll do fluorescent yellow at the whole front of this brush. And I'm going to tag team that with straight gold. That's a little too much. Spread that out. So you can see how complex this is already in color. And I'm going to do a video on color uh, towards the end of the Tie Like a Pro series. But something I am a big fan of, and don't take this the wrong way, but I'm a big fan of complexity. Not, uh, not difficulty and not things that are necessarily unnecessary um, in terms of fly design. But if you're going to express yourself in any zone, um, you know, I believe in simplicity of design but complexity of color. Sorry for bumping the camera there. I believe in simplicity of design but complexity in color because nothing in nature is one color. It's, it's extremely diverse and rich and I think making a bait complex itself uh, makes it real whether or not it's accurate to a specific forge or not, which is one of the reasons why I go through you know, changing my flash core and my wing core and now I'm going to come in with an accent uh, color. This is Supreme Hair. Um, so sorry to digress on color, but this is Supreme Hair and something uh, that this does extremely well as it builds bulk. It's a really stiff uh, fiber and it's a really fine S crinkle. And I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to take, I want you to be able to see it. Um, but if you take a fiber, and this is, you can just do this at home to compare stiffness, but if you hold this out, you'll see it droop, right? It, it'll just, well, that might have a little kink in it. But if, if you just hold it out at full length, you know, it'll curve away, right? If you cut this short, It'll stick straight out. I don't know if you can see that or not. Take your fiber at home, you know, hold it s seven inches long, and it'll curve. It follows my finger, right? It drops straight down. It just, bleh, it's like sad. If you cut that so that it's only two inches long, it sticks almost straight out. That's your bulk. 
you, you don't need to use a fiber at full length to get your bulk um, because the longer a fiber is, the greater force, the greater momentum, momentum force, moment force, the greater moment force that gravity and water is going to have on it. If you have a really long fiber, that's a lot of water friction on this fiber and it's going to collapse on you. But if it's only two inches long, it can be a lot stiffer and support itself because the water pressure has less leverage on it. So when I take this Supreme hair, I find that I get the bulkiest shoulders and the stiffest, uh, kind of, basically the stiffest shoulders when I cut it into about thirds. I want to cut it into about three inch length. Yep, that's about three inch, right? This is three inches. About three inch length is going to give me the stiffest core to build the bulkiest profile. And that might not be intuitive to you, uh, so just try that. I just messed up the end of my brush here. But instead of just, you know, trying to use this at an extremely random long length, play with it and take it out and see where it supports itself the best to create the stiffest contour. So I'm just going to cut this into thirds in my lap here. And it doesn't have to be perfect thirds, I'm not that worried about it. But I like to inlay this, especially right at the head, right into my shoulder regions. Um, and this, basically for the most part, this entire front brush right here. And this is your bulk builder, instead of using the curl from the big fly fiber. And then I'm going to spin this up. I'm going to really quickly fix the end of this brush. I caught it with my sleeve and I'm missing some fibers down here. But this is the Mega Jerk brush and its final stages. And what's funny is I just said that this was the Mega Jerk brush and its final stages, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, so I talked about complexity, right? And how you can take brushes as far as you want to go. I'm going to come in with just some holographic yellow, some pearl dyed black, and I'm just going to inlay this. Um, I'm going to use it basically at full length and cut two or three inches short um, and put my flashy boot in my, in my brush to add contrast and goodness. So that's, that's the brush about as complex as I, I make them. Um, and I'm just going to simply walk this forward with some wax. And spin this up. When you get to this stage, I just lock this in place. I like to come in here and you're just going to want to run your fingers back and forth and stop these two things from falling into each other. Right? And I'm just trying to get the ends of my brush wherever they start and stop to kind of knot, to physically knot and kind of tangle on top of each other to stop each section so that I don't get a big sloppy mess.
So while I'm, I'm kind of pulling this out and trying to make it uh, usable, you can just see in general how much bulkier and stiffer that whole front section is and how cool that kind of contrast looks. Um, but something you want to be aware of, you don't want to lose the direction that you tapered your, your tail section, right? Because we went one, two, four in terms of density, 50, 100, 200. Um, and so you want to make sure, I kind of just like to preen this up towards the front. So when I tie it in, I'm going to tie it in right here and wrap it forward. And that's how I, I look at that. But um, That's the brush. And what I like to do is I'll come up to the front and right before I tie it in, um, I just like to kind of come in, if you've ever been to a hair salon, and just kind of uneven these tips and shorten up your big fly fiber wing so that it lands uh, halfway down this, this rear stack, right? Cool. I'm sure that looks ridiculous on film, but that's what I do. <laughs> so that's your big or your mega jerk brush. Um, so yeah, and if you want to see this in action, I'll probably refilm this video because I have you know I've updated it and changed it a little bit, changed the tail, uh, changed the connection for durability, a little keel weight in there, um, different eye sizes and stuff like that. So I'll probably refilm this at some point. But that is your your front hook, your tail hook. Uh, with a, the gap kind of missing and that's your teardrop overlapping your teardrop so that it creates a single silhouette uh, that I showed you guys and if you want to check out this dubbing brush device the turbo spinner uh, the wire and I have all of these materials believe it or not everything but the flash boo I have the SF cord the big fly fiber wing the supreme hair and the ripple ice fiber and only my favorite color combos so I like to do white brushes and fire tiger brushes um, and between those two I change all of my fly colors basically based on the wing material which is usually Steve Farrar blend and I have a, a little material kit for that with like three or four different colors of Steve Farrar blend so check all of that out only if you're interested um, and hopefully I'll see you guys in episode 6 part 2 where we're going to go over a composite uh, bugger brush composite bugger brush uh, that's used in the death grip series and we'll talk about that design and and a smaller trout style brush. So thanks for watching. I know that was a long one. Um, hopefully you found that interesting and bookmark the Mega Jerk uh, brush because that's going to come in handy for a handful of tutorials in the near future. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.